no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report. Today's show and this mustache is provided by Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. I was live on Chat Sports. Somebody said, hey, 100 bucks, you can shave your entire face and rock a mustache. I was like, you know what, man? Hell yeah, free mustache rides from here on out. Coming up here on today's show, we're going to be breaking down the entire Raiders draft from the 2021 class, and I'm going to give you my grades on it. The first overall pick, number 17 overall by the Las Vegas Raiders, was Alex Leatherwood. When I first saw this pick, and I know a lot of people out there were like, oh, man, I don't know. I'll be honest with you all. I panicked. I didn't really like it in the beginning. He was my number six offensive tackle. I thought he was the 32 overall prize prospect for the Raiders to take him where they did I was like man I think it's a little bit of a reach I'm just going to tell y'all right now the way that the rest of this draft ended up falling I am way more okay with this pick for the simple fact of this he is a good offensive lineman with a lot of abilities a strong run blocker which is why when you see a guy like Tom Cable which is why he ended up going with something like this 6'4", 312 pounds. He's a national champion. He is a captain on his team. One of the players that a lot of people look towards in that Alabama locker room. Three sacks allowed in 2020. So when I think about why the Raiders decided to go this way, it was one of the biggest needs here. So what I'm curious about is go down in the comments section and I want you to get your grades in. How did you feel about Alex Leatherwood? So if you could Go down in the comments. Let me know right now how y'all feel about Alex Leatherwood and overall this pick for the Las Vegas Raiders because when I think about it from top to bottom, A, B, C, D, or F, please go down in the comments section right now and let me know. Leatherwood's a good player, and I know a lot of people kind of overreacted at first, but when I think about this from now standpoint, because now I can cheat a little bit. I can say, okay, I saw how the entire draft board fell, and I'm going to tip my cap to a guy like Mike Mack. I'm going to tip my cap to John Gruden for saying, you know what? You rolled the dice, and if Leatherwood's the guy that you wanted, you went out and got him because I'm okay because the guy that you got in second round – even more okay. And I don't know if Leatherwood would have been around for the Raiders' second round pick. So go down to the comment section right now. A, B, C, D, or F. I'm going to give this a B minus grade. Remember, I am a tough grader. A is it's a great pick. B is it's a good pick. C, it's an average pick. This is an above average pick in round one. I saw a lot of people saying it reminds me of Cleveland Furl. Not quite in terms of Cleveland Furl is a very good player. Alex Otherwood, very good player. Did they reach on him a little bit? Sure, they did. It kind of reminds me a lot of Colt Miller. Leatherwood might not be the best tackle year one. That's okay. If we're looking here two, three years down the road, and he's as good as what Colt Miller is right now, you have Colt Miller, Alex Otherwood, yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, y'all, so if you want to know everything going on with the Las Vegas Raiders, hit that big red button that says subscribe. Make sure you don't miss a video. Turn on those notifications. The diehard Raider fans that are watching the Raiders sport in the offseason, those are the dudes that I like to get down with. So if you bleed silver and black, if it's in your veins, if you got a tattooed on your arm, go ahead and subscribe. Once we get to 100,000 subscribers, there's a little birdie. I'm going to give it two chalky heads. I might get a Raiders tattoo. All right, let's go to round two. Pick number 43 here. The Las Vegas Raiders had to trade up to get Trevon Merrig, the top safety in this year's draft. I was surprised at Trevon Holland. I was surprised at Richie Grant right in front of him. Y'all can see, Merrick, I thought it should go number 29 overall. I had him higher than Alex Leatherwood, which is kind of why I'm, I'm okay now. Because if you were to tell me about a week ago that we get Merrick and Alex Leatherwood on our first two picks, but you just swapped first and second round, dude, I am absolutely loving the start of this draft. He is going to be the free safety. I know Mike Mayock said that he's going to compete with Jeff Heath. What do you expect him to say? Merrick is the better player. He's the guy that they drafted, they traded up for. He is going to be your free safety, your starter on week one. So go ahead and grade the pick A, B, C, D, or F. And what I want you guys to do, because I'm going to ask you to grade A, B, C, D, or F on every single one of these. Put the player's last name, which I've spelled for you on screen, and then put the grade that you have next to it, because that's the important thing here. Not only do I love this pick, not only do I think this is the best pick by the Raiders in this year's draft, I'm going to say this is actually probably one of the top five picks in the entire NFL draft. The fact that the top safety on the board, who a lot of experts thought would go top 20, ended up falling to 43, and he fell because he had some back concerns. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be 100% okay. I'm giving this an A+. Plus grade. The number one safety went third in terms of safety prospects. Goes exactly to the team that he needed to go to. I know for Merrick, he already has tweeted out, just win, baby. 
What more could you possibly want from your player? Absolutely love this kid. I'm excited to see what he's going to do as the Las Vegas Raider. Let's go to round three now. Pick number 79, Malcolm Kuntz, edge rusher from Buffalo, 6'2", 249 pounds. I saw the phone call, John Gruden, Mike Mack, when they ended up calling this kid. They were like, hey, man, you know the last time we took an edge rusher from Buffalo, he was pretty damn good. Are you ready to live up to that hype? Kuntz's answer was, hell yeah, man, I'm ready to rock and roll. You see the grade at round four. That's okay. The reason why I like this pick a lot is because Mayock said that he reminds me a lot of Yannick Ngakwe. I personally believe that the reason why they went out and got Koontz, and if you remember, Yannick Ngakwe was also drafted in round three out of Maryland. You put him underneath Ngakwe's wing and said, hey, this is what I did to really succeed. You can't deny the athletic ability. You can't deny his overall talent. If he can just live up to the hype a little bit, the other thing that I love about him, his bend. Max Crosby had great bend. That's one of the reasons why he can really get underneath the tackles. I really like the pick here in Koontz. So grade the pick A, B, C, D, or F. What I want you to do down in the comments, if you're watching us live right now, type Koontz, K-O-O-N-C-E, and then throw in your grade there. I'm not going to give this an A. I've kind of gone back and forth how I thought about this pick. Was it my favorite third round pick that the Raiders had? No, it wasn't. But I am still going to give this a B minus grade. This is an above average pick. Was edge rusher the biggest need for this team? No. But one of the biggest reasons why the Raiders decided to move on from Arden Key is because not only could you save over $2 million, and sure, you got another weakness in Carl Nassib. That's why all the trade rumors are around him. But I really like Kutz because now you have somebody that can probably fill in as like a Benson Mayoa style of role. Like the Raiders have really missed Benny Mayoa, a player who's going to play 30% of the snaps. He's going to be able to come in on third down, pin his ears back, use that athletic ability, and really get after the quarterback. Now today's show is presented by Manscaped. I shaved my face with a lawnmower 3.0 a little bit earlier on the show. And if you want to be able to save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there, Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders and make sure you use promo code Raiders where, again, 20% off free shipping. The Lawnmower 3.0 fits great in your ham. You can see the light on the end there, which I think I can get to it. Yep, right there. Get those hard to reach places. If you're trying to shave your black hole, if you're sitting there in the shower and you're like, oh, man, I'm going to get electrocuted. No, you're not. This thing's waterproof. An eight-hour battery life. There is not a better tool to use than the Lawnmower 3.0. If you don't believe me, I will send you the video myself of me shaving my face with this bad boy on Chat Sports. Head on over to manscaped.com slash Raiders. 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. Who wants some double Ds? You want some double Ds? I got it for you. Divine Diablo safety from Virginia Tech at 6'3", 226. Wow, that's a big safety, but you see that grade right there? Second and third rounder, number 69 overall. I want everyone right now to start spamming nice in the comments section. This is a player that when he got drafted by the Raiders, Tom literally just shouted, wow, that is an absolutely phenomenal pick. 55 tackles, four interceptions, four pass breakups for Diablo. Now, the reason why I'm really excited about him is because of the fit here. You see the size, 6'3", 226 pounds, the 4.44 40-yard dash. He is a big dude who's really able to get after it. Now, the comp that I'm going to throw out there, I don't see him being a Cam, Cam Chancellor in terms of the right athletic ability and comp, but Gus Bradley, when that defense, the Legion of Boom for the Seattle Seahawks was at its best, it's when it had a guy like Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman. I don't think they have their Richard Sherman, and I don't really know if they have their Earl Thomas, even though I love Merrick a lot. But the guy that the way that I think they're going to use somebody like Diablo is a lot like the same way that they use somebody like Cam Chancellor, where he's going to play safety, he's going to play a little bit of a linebacker hybrid. Plus, this is going to allow a guy like Jonathan Abram to really come up and just plow through that box. Giggity. So grade the pick here of Diablo, and it's spelled D-E-A-B-L-O, I believe is the, the correct way to spell it. I was trying to put things together quick. I was excited. So go down in the comments right now. Let me know A, B, C, D, or F. I want you to grade the pick here for De Divine Diablo. I'm going to give it an A minus grade. I mean, this is a above average pick. It's a above a good pick. I would almost say it's a great pick. I know this hasn't been a player that I've talked a lot about on the Raiders report. And for that, I apologize, right? We were talking a lot about a, other, a bunch of other safeties because I thought the Raiders were going to go with like a nickel cornerback safety hybrid slash somebody that they could just put at free safety. And the guys at free safety that we talked about were Merrick. You know, we talked about Merrick. We talked about Richie Grant, who ended up going in front of him. Divine Diablo was a name that I wish I would have brought up a little bit more. Maybe once or twice I did. However, it's a really good pick here for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Raiders also traded up for another safety. 
Tyree Gillespie, safety from Missouri. Gillespie, round four, pick 143, number nine safety overall. So it's pretty interesting the fact that they ended up taking, realistically, three safeties with, well, their top five picks. 5'11", 207 pounds, a number 11, wait, 111 overall, a fourth round grade. The fact that he fell to 143, the Raiders were really excited. That's why they ended up trading pick number 162. They also traded pick number 200, 46 tackles, didn't have any interceptions his entire career, four pass breakups. But what I want you to do, go down in the comments right now again and let me know what you're thinking. He's not really going to be a free safety in this, off, in this defense. That's not how he's going to end up being. But he also played a little bit of free safety. He played some slot as well. He lined up in the nickel. But he's really going to be somebody who's really going to try to just like play a just get after the quarterback type role. He's a good run stopper. I am curious to see how he fits. I do think that the fact that they went out and drafted Divine and a guy like um, you know Tyree Gillespie is bad news for somebody like a uh, Tanner Muse. It's bad news for somebody like an Isaiah Johnson. But A, B, C, D, or F, let me know down in the comment section what you're feeling. This is an A- minus grade for me. Again, another player that I liked a lot. I like the value here. I am normally team trade back, but I've always said I am a man of value. If you think that you can get some solid value here, you go ahead and do it. And if a player that you have ranked is like 110 and he falls down to 143, dude, I don't know about you, that spells out value to me. Now, this next pick wasn't as crazy about cornerback from Illinois, Nate Hobbs, round five, pick 167. As you all can see, he was our 40th ranked cornerback. Overall value of 278, the grade as the seventh overall pick. He had 31 tackles, one interception, two pass breakups, but... This is one of those players that I'm actually not too crazy about. Now, did he test well? Yes, he absolutely did. I loved his vertical. I loved his uh, short run. I, I mean, I, I love what he brings from an athletic standpoint. And if you just look at his pro day numbers, which maybe Mayock, Gruden, and Gus Bradley did, you're going to be excited. But if you go watch the tape, he gets burnt way too much. And he's, I believe, given up a completion percentage of like 86%. That does scare me a lot because I think we are all – realize we're sick and tired of seeing cornerbacks get burnt here by the Las Vegas Raiders. So grade the Hobbs pick, A, B, C, D, or F. I think I've actually done a pretty good job so far. I don't know if I've given a single C, and no, I haven't given a single C grade yet. However, here's going to be my first C grade, and I don't really like to be the guy that gives a C grade in round five, but when you take somebody that I believe is a little bit below average of where he should have gone, that's what's going to happen. Does he actually have some high upside, though? Yes, I do. Is he going to be a pretty solid a special teams player? That's where I believe he makes his biggest impact because when you look at his speed, when you look at his ability to really be able to get after you know the people or the quarterback or whatnot, especially going down the field, that would be great. Also, Jeremy, if you could fix the lower third that you're about to show real quick, it's literally just Autumn Abyss, no code. So if you get rid of that real quick, that would be uh, greatly, greatly appreciated there. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get that one together. But for grade the Hobbs pick, a, B, C, D, or F, if you guys please could, go down in the comments section and uh, let me know. If you guys like the shirt that I am wearing, it is from Autumn Abyss. So head on over to AutumnAbyss.com where you can get some high quality gear. Now, the deal, unfortunately, it ended maybe, just maybe I can sweet talk them to getting you guys some 30% off. But head on over to Autumn Abyss and if you join the Abyss, so basically this is the way I can get you guys your deal, okay? If you join the Abyss by going to AutumnAbyss.com, you click the very first button that you see. It says, I believe it says, Join the Abyss. You can get 20% off and get you guys hooked up on deals. The reason why I love this company is because if you guys like shirts that feel like Nike Dry Fit, it's the highest quality shirt that I've ever worn in terms of a Raiders t-shirt. Plus, they also give back the foundation. So if you want a Tom Flores hoodie, you can get a Tom Flores hoodie plus all the uh, money the proceeds also goes to help the Tom Flores Foundation. They also have a proceed in terms of like helping kids in Oakland. The Bojack, like they have so many different awesome quality t-shirts. Please go ahead and check them out. AutumnAbyss.com and tell Mitch sent you. All right, the last pick here, round seven, pick 230 overall, Jimmy Morrissey, center from Pittsburgh. He's 6'3", 303 pounds. He's my 25th overall center, 257 grade, seventh round pick. So again, this is basically exactly where I saw a player like him going. He's a smart football player, which happens a lot from the guys from Pittsburgh. Three sacks allowed in 2020. What I want you to do is go down in the comment section again and let me know, pass or fail, grade the pick, A, B, C, D, or F, type Morrissey. 
and then go ahead and type the grade in there. I mean, again, when you, when you get to this point in the draft, you're looking for versatility. You're looking for somebody that could potentially actually be just a player that makes your roster. So I'm going to give it a B- minus grade. He's a good player. He's a smart player, and it actually makes a lot of sense for me why Gruden would actually like him. He was a big-time leader in the locker room from a lot of the things that his coaches were saying about him. And if that's the type of dude that you're looking for that can be a Gruden grinder, then go ahead. And take that guy. All right, y'all, so we're getting ready to wrap up this bad boy right here. I want you to go ahead and rate the Raiders draft, okay? Zero to 100. So zero to 100. So go down in the comment section and let me know. If you're thinking like, man, this was 100 greatest, best draft the Raiders have had in a long time, go ahead and type 100. But we've all been to school, right? Would you be proud of a test grade of 80? Maybe some people would. Would you be proud of a test grade of a 90? When I remember my, my days, I was never a good student. I'm just going to be honest with you all right now. I was always the, the class clown, having a good time, joking around here and there. But what I want you to do, let me know how you feel about the Raiders draft, 0 to 100. My grade is an 87 overall, which is a good grade. It's a it's a above above good, right? It'd be like a B plus, if you will. It didn't quite hit an A because even though the Alex Leatherwood pick was I'm okay with it now, you still could have gone a lot of different options, in my personal opinion. There's still some other better tackles out there. And realistically, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why it's not an A, because remember, the most important pick of the draft is that round one pick. The Raiders, though, they didn't quite go the right direction. They also went a very, very heavy in that defensive backfield, which it explains exactly how a guy like Gus Bradley feels about a lot of the players that the Raiders drafted last year and the year before that. You're going to see a lot of competition, which I am very, very excited to see. So it's just another reason to subscribe to the Raiders report because we're going to be breaking a lot of stuff down in May, in June, and July, just because it's the off season, we're still going to be keeping you guys updated on videos every single day. Raider Nation, go ahead, type down your grades in the comment section below.